Thank you. All right. Uh, where am I at? Da, 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 even. Okay. So even symmetry. I always remember the basic example I remember is x squared. It's got an even power, right? And the graph looks, you know, it looks more like a parabola if you, oh my God, this is a parabola. Somebody, something has happened to this poor guy. Um, let me try this again. That is just pathetic, Jeff. All right. Let me turn this around a little bit. All right, there we go. Even. So like y equals x squared. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's just the way it's going to be, Jeff. So even sim. Oh my God. All right, all right. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? This is not going to stand. I'm going to go over there. Okay. All right. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just going to be that way. Um, even symmetry means that for some X, whatever the output is, it's the same output for negative X. So in this case, even symmetry means that F of negative X equals F of X. Oh crap. You guys can speak up anytime you want to. Okay. So even symmetry, I think of a parabola, kind of makes sense. And this is a way to kind of see why we call it even symmetry as an even power. And of course, isn't this true for this? What's, what's this? What's negative X whole thing squared? This X. X, yeah. X. Squared. Squared, there we go. So. When you plug a negative x into the function, it becomes itself again. That's the basic definition of an even. And visually, it's symmetric with the y-axis. Right? This has a mirror image across the y-axis. Like there's a mirror at the y-axis. Is that cool? So there's an algebraic definition. There's a, a graphical definition. Okay. Um, odd is like y equals x cubed. which uh, goes wee So any uh, X value, when I put a negative X in, it's the negative of, so F of X here, negative F of X there. So for odd symmetry, when I put a negative X in, I get the opposite of what the function was to begin with. And if I try it here, negative X cubed is negative X so when I plug a negative X in, I get the opposite of what the function was. Hey. And I like some of you guys are pointing out that it's it's also rotational symmetry. If I rotate this by 180 degrees, it lines back up on itself, which is, which is beautiful. So whatever function I give you, that's how you test it. So what about, um, oh, I got to get a new one of these. What about... Somebody got this that wants it? Okay. Um, so if I said, how do you test this for symmetry? Well, you just throw a negative X in. Does anyone know what happens to this? Oh yes, trigonometry. Early on a Monday, I love it. So, all right, how do you remember this? Um, so here's an angle. Here's here's an angle X, right? So uh, I'm thinking about a unit circle now. So an angle X here, and the angle negative X is the cosine the same the opposite or not related at all the opposite nope because what's cosine what's the cosine of an angle tell you the y piece or the x piece the x piece 
X piece. So is the X piece different for this triangle and this triangle? No. No. Same shit. So, so what kind of symmetry does this have? When I plugged in negative X in, it came out to be the same function. What kind of symmetry does this have? Even. Even. Bam. Now, here's a, a real quick. Uh, what does cosine look like? You know, like, how do I answer that in words, Jeff? Uh, does, does anyone know how to answer that in words? Uh, instead of, it's like a, like a skate ramp, <laughs> like a bowl. Where does it start? Uh, one. Good. It at one, yeah. The way I talk about it, I think of it as an octopus, <laughs> right? Think of it as an octopus. Uh, it's got eight legs. It's just, they're all like lined up with each other. So give me a break. It's got some octopuses that had a rough life. Um, do you see, is it, wasn't this even symmetry? Why was this even symmetry? Because it's symmetric across the what? Why is that even symmetry? It's the y -axis. Across the y axis. Y axis is where the mirror is. Where's the mirror here? Y axis? Yeah, that's why it's even. So that's the algebraic work. Cosine itself is even because it's symmetric about the y axis, right? Okay. So most of the time it's easier to do it algebraically. Throw a negative x in and see what it comes out to be. Okay. Is that all right? Is that all right? Yes, yeah, good. good. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Anything else, guys? If all oh, the um, number 20, the splitting the one over the square root of x plus the square oh, root of yeah. x, is that problem? So let me, real quick, real quick, I'll do an example that's sort of like that one. If we have a function that is, um, what do you got, Jeff? You can do it, buddy. Yeah, uh, sine of um, one plus the square root of, uh, of um, natural log of x. Okay, I like it. Okay, because I don't want to do that problem because that's your homework, but let me show you a problem like it. Let me ask you this question. What is the innermost function? Can somebody just tell me what's the innermost function? What's the function most on the inside? Natural log of x? Yes, right? Because isn't 1 plus ln x squared uh, inside the sign? But isn't this inside of this? I mean, so it's, it's like Russian nesting dolls. Do you guys know Russian nesting dolls, right? There's another one. There's another one. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what this is. Yes. Isn't this going to be natural log of x? Maybe. Right. Now here's now watch what I could do. The minute I figured out that that is natural log of x, let me write this as sine of one plus square root of of h of x. Now what function did I throw h of x into? What's G? What function is H of X thrown into? One plus the square root of X. Yes. So this must be G of X, because then G of H of X would just be one plus square root of natural log of X. And then what's F? Because what is this thrown into? Sine of X. F would be sine. All right, Jeff, call that. So there actually are kind of multiple answers, but they're all sort of related, to be honest. So there's, this isn't the same exact kind of problem, but this gives you the way to think about it, correct? Okay, so you can attack that problem again. Okay. All right, I like it. That was a freaky one. Anything else? No, okay. No. All right. All right. So let me explain a couple things about this week in the quiz. 
Um, all right. So, okay. This is weird for me, but I think I should tell you everything. Uh, it's not going to take a long time, but it's just uh, personal. Uh, I had a really good friend of mine from high school. Uh, we're, we were still friends. He passed away. So he's been friends of mine since I was 16. <laughs> so like, uh, I've been friends with this person then longer than most of you guys have been alive. All right. And he passed away last Thursday. Um, so I'm going to the funeral this Friday. So I'm not, so I'm leaving Wednesday, uh, early because I'm actually flying to Richmond and then, and another friend's flying to Richmond. I'm going to drive down to Florida. That's where he, uh, passed away. Um, so. Here's what's going to happen. You guys didn't necessarily need to know all that, but I just I needed to tell you in case I'm weird at some point. Um, and I'm just weird anyway, so who cares? Um, what's going to happen is this. Uh, let me let me show you. Um, I've built into Canvas the quiz here. Let me see where. So if you go to modules in Canvas now, it should have at the very top quizzes. Oh shit! Maybe I can make that published. There we go. Now it should. Now let's say quizzes at the top. So if you click on quiz one, it for you guys, it'll look like this for right now. Right? So notice what it says up here. It's due Wednesday at 11, but it doesn't open until Wednesday at 8. So Wednesday, we're not having class because Jeff is going to be in the air <laughs> while, while class is supposed to be happening, correct? So what I decided to do, instead of opening the quiz up and just letting you have like 24 hours within which to pick, since we're not having class Wednesday, I figured I'm just going to give you that window on Wednesday. And I gave you a little bit longer than normal. It starts at 8, goes to 11. So you should be able to find, and, and, and I've given you one hour to do the quiz, which is way more time than you need. But I kind of like to give some buffer for technical issues and whatever. Uh, is everybody understanding how this is so far? Right. So on Wednesday, there will not be lecture. I'll send an email remind everybody um, because, again, I won't be able to do it. And the people that I would be comfortable taking and subbing calculus class, none of them are available. So which is fine because is everybody with me on the quiz? Everybody kind of understand how the quiz is going to work. And just to, just to show you, I'm going to show you what I can see. I can see more than you. Ha ha. But this is what it's going to say. Here's what the instructions are going to be for the quiz. <laughs> I don't know. Wesley says, yee. Okay. Um, so once you click on take the quiz, you'll have one hour to complete this. No calculators allowed. You don't need to print the quiz out. You can do the work on another sheet of paper or print the quiz out. Everybody with me so far? It's pretty basic, right? Uh, when you're done, click on the text box below the quiz and type in done. Um, so there'll be a little text box and then click submit quiz. There'll be a little submit quiz button at the bottom of the quiz. Is anybody taking qu quizzes in Canvas? I'm sure you must have. Okay. Uh, and then, no, no, I'm really sorry. And then you're going to scan and submit your work where it says submit quiz one here. So I'm going to make another thing. And, and trust me, if there was an easier way to do this, I would. But underneath here, it's going to say submit quiz one here. And that's where you're going to scan your quiz and turn it in, just like homework, right? I love it. Um, okay. Any questions about how the quiz is going to work? No quiz today, exactly. So if you haven't done chapter one homework or, your, or whatever, you, or, and, and I just graded some of your stuff this morning. So now that gives you some time to try to do some corrections or whatever. And anything you get you turn in by tomorrow uh, afternoon, I, I'm going to try to get in there in grades so that uh, you have some stuff to look at to help you. Um, any questions about how the quiz is going to work? Yeah, so so like once like we click on start quiz and stuff, it's going to be like another like I guess like I guess like something's like turns going to load up and then we like look at the answers, not look at the answer, but look at the question, the answer like that, and then scan it. Up. Hold on. Let me let me let me go to a previous. I'll do this. Let me go to a class I taught before, and I can show you one of their quizzes. So I can show you what it's going to look like when you when it's actually alive. Hold on. Bop, 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 bop. Here we go. All right. Come here. There it is. No, I don't want to do that. Hold on. Sorry. Um. I do do. So here's my 
pre-calculus canvas shell. Um, so for example, I don't know, just click on a quiz. You got the instructions, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, it says, um, oh, let me become a student. Okay. I'm a student. So when it's alive, when, on this Wednesday at 8 a.m., it's going to look like this. Take the you click take the quiz, and bam. Oh, and bam! Look at that, and bam! It just oh there it is. Uh, and you can print this out if you want to. You don't have to. Does that make sense? And then when you're done, you're gonna down here. You're gonna type done, or you could even spell it correctly. And then you're gonna hit submit quiz. See that? You're gonna hit submit quiz. And then. <laughs> because nothing can be easy now. Uh, once you do that, you will see submit quiz five, or you, you know, for us it'll be quiz one, right? So you click that and you just turn it in just like a normal, just like homework, just like you've been turning in homework, right? Is that cool or understood, I guess? You're like, I don't know about cool, dude, but okay. Now, <laughs> what's going to happen on Friday is uh, this is going to be different for me. Have you guys ever heard of a flipped classroom? And you're all like, what the hell does that mean? You, you just turn the whole freaking thing. Tyler, what's up? Have you heard of yeah. it? What happens in a flipped classroom? Yeah, I heard of I. I had to do one of those for my pre-cal class, but basically uh, you do the lecture on, on kind of like as a homework assignment yes and then in class in doing... class yeah. see what basically review it yes so i'm not going to change our class i'm not but on friday i'm going to ask or actually i'm going to let you just do it whenever i'm going to have a video from my youtube uh from uh the last time I, from last semester and you know, i'm going to have a, a lecture i want you to watch it obviously i'm not going to make you fully responsible for it we're going to kind of go over it again on monday real quick but um so everybody understand so i'm going to open that video up it's going to count as friday's lecture but you can watch it whenever the hell you got time um and then i'll see if people have questions from it and and then we can keep going okay just trying to keep us a little bit on track the nice thing is okay so here's the other nice thing any any questions on how this week is going to work wednesday quiz it's going to happen during our normal class time uh it's going to be due by 11 wednesday and you have an hour to do it. So you want to get done, you want to start at least by 10, right? Give yourself the full hour. Because if you start at 1040, you have 20 minutes. You don't have an hour too bad. Um, and then what's going to count as Friday's lecture will be the YouTube video that you can watch whenever you want to. You could actually not watch it and just say you did. That's an option you could take. I would really like it if you watch it, but uh, you might be coming to class Monday better prepared to ask questions. Um, all right. Okay, um, and and then we're still going to have a quiz next Monday, believe it or not, because I'm evil like that. Uh, section two one two 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 three will be next Monday's quiz. Two one two 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 three, next Monday's quiz. Um, oh shit, sixteenth? Did I really do that? I'm so happy, Carmen. You said that. Um, that sounds like something I would do. Hold on. Oh, I totally did. That's really good, Jeff. All right, let me change that right now because otherwise I'll forget. I just saw Wednesday and went with it. Wednesday the ninth. That's this Wednesday. That's better. Oh, that would have sucked. Or was somebody like, I see that, but I'm not going to say anything because then, then I get more time. No, all right. Too bad for you guys, Carmen. Um, <laughs> yeah you should get used to that kind of thing uh my my gifts to you are often uh gifts you might not ap appreciate so it's just the way it is yeah no yeah I'm, I, wednesday morning i'm gonna be um in the air and friday morning i'm gonna be at the funeral so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna zoom obviously um Okay, okay. Uh, I'm really happy I got through all that without crying. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Well, now I might cry. I'm going to try not to. Okay, I'll be all right. Um, I know it's weird. I know it's weird. Don't worry about me. 
I'm fine. You don't know me well enough to like, and it might've been oversharing, but I just wanted to let you know in case I, um, it's always a weird thing as a teacher to figure out, should I just teach and, and maybe be weird for whatever reason, or should I tell them so that they know why I might be weird? Okay. Um, here's another thing. Now, here's the real gift. You ready for a real gift? Like, a, a, I, I promise you, you will like this gift. Um, I'm going to make section 2-4 extra credit, right? We're going to talk about it very quickly right now. But I, I kind of just want to try to get we're actually doing really pretty well with timing i'm a little concerned to be really, really, really honest i'm a little concerned about what i've seen on chapter one homework. Um, um, some of you guys sometimes it might be that you're just not used to what I want yet uh, you're getting the message that I need more detail when the point of the problem is a graph. It needs more detail if you're using a graph to help you do a problem where the graph is not the point of the problem, then it could be a rough sketch. We've done that a couple of times already. But when the point of the problem is a graph, you better show me detail and you always got to show me work, right? Uh, if you don't show me work, I've got nothing to grade. I've got no job to do. I can't help you. Okay. Um, I have a shirt that says show your work. So I'll wear that eventually so you can really see I mean, I mean business. Um, okay, so let's do this. We're going to talk about section 2.4 a bit. Uh, I think you'll be excited that I'm making it extra credit because <laughs> it can be a little uh, confusing. Um, I'm not going to try it. No, Jeff, get back to the whiteboard because you're not going to write well. Um, hold on. And, and really want to make sure. Any questions before we get into lecture today? Anything about how this week is going to work? Are you guys all understanding? Okay. All right. And I'll send an email reminder out about a few things. Um, so, just I, I, I all right. Uh, a few of my colleagues don't cover two four at all, and I think two four is so important. But I'm okay making it extra credit, considering that some of my colleagues don't even cover it at all. But I have to talk about it a little bit. Um, if I have a function and at some point, there we go, a, uh, let me not even do that. Let me just say this. L. So this is the limit as x goes to a of f of x is L. Is that statement true based on what I've drawn? Yes. Can somebody tell me why that statement's true based on what I've drawn? Because uh, when you're approaching. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, because when you're approaching it from the left and from the right, uh, they both end at a. Well, they both seem like they're going to end at L. Okay, I, I, I like that. That's good for everyday conversation. Can somebody else flesh out more details in what he just said? Make it a little more detailed, a little more specific. Um, I'm hoping somebody says a, a kind of what? So, so start what you said again as what? So as the limit of, um, so as X approaches A. Yes, okay, stop right there. Yes. What? Can somebody else tell me what that means as X approaches A? Somebody tell me what that means. For this case, it's saying that as X is approaching A from both the left hand and the right hand side. All right, now stop right there. Now, what does it mean for X to approach A? What does that mean? It, it gets arbitrary close to A, but it doesn't touch A. I'll, okay, let's stop right there. I love it. There's one of the words I was hoping to hear. Uh, as our inputs, get arbitrarily close to a so as now watch this now please don't tune out just because this is extra credit right Just pay attention go i'm going to pay attention because then i don't have to do anything with it so you know um here's the really freaky thing close C close it cl what's close i don't know so as i get 
to within so much of A and the letter we use for a small distance away from A, we use the letter, um, you can do it, Jeff. Why did it just go out of my head? Delta. All right, let me draw it a little bit. Here's Delta. Delta is like a D that's feeling fancy, right? It looks more like a musical note, I think. Jeff, this is a crazy eraser. Okay, well, that's better. Um, so I really want this to make sense. So if I am delta away from A, if I am some little distance away from A, let's no, I really want to look at this visual. Isn't the output for this right there? Isn't the output for this right there? Yes. And don't I end up being some distance away from L, right? Okay, and I've kind of done this backwards, of course, but if somebody comes along and says to me, oh, you think the limit is L? Okay. I want you to be, and this, by the way, this is epsilon. I don't know if I'm it. it's a little, um, like a C with a, with a line in the middle. Looks like an E that's just feeling very relaxed. I don't know, right? Right, here's the rigid, here's the R, and then here's the, oh, dude, just take it easy. All right. um, so if somebody wants me to be this close to L, I can always figure out a delta so that this is always that close to L at least, right? So if somebody came in and said, uh-uh, 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 dude, no, no, no. I want you to be this close, not that close. I want you to be this close. And then I'm like, all right, no problem. There we go. There we go. I can figure out how far, do you, do you, guys, do you guys get that connection? And, and that can only always work if L really is the limit, right? I mean, if I thought the limit was this and somebody's like, be this close, I am screwed. I, I, I can't ever make this that close to this. I, 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 I don't know if you guys are really with me. So what section two, four does is it gives us a little more formal definition of what the shit close is, right? Because close is a very subjective word. Yes. Do you live close to me? No, you're, you know, like three miles away. Oh, you're not like walking distance. Or do you live close to me? Yeah, you're on the planet Earth. I mean, so it depends on your perspective, what close is. But here it's kind of like uh, epsilon is close on the y-axis. And however arbitrarily close somebody wants me to get, I can always make my outputs that close if I'm delta away from my input a okay and there's a whole proof to section two four um let me do this i'm going to do one more thing and then we're going to get into section two five um let me try to keep all this up here yeah Let's see if i could do this so if this is true then we must be able to find a delta. We must be able to find a delta so that if, let me see how you guys feel about this. I really, what does absolute value mean real quick? What does absolute value mean? Can somebody tell me one English word that tells me what absolute value means? Positive. I like that, except it's not quite right because what's the absolute value? Zero. Zero. which is not positive or negative so but i appreciate that idea uh brianna is correct distance absolute value is distance which is why it can't ever be negative right you wouldn't say that somebody is negative four feet away from you because that would mean they're inside you like quade you know so uh that's weird so don't do that right um so if x if my input is delta away from A, isn't that what this says? Delta away from A. So my X is in here somewhere. If my X is in here somewhere, then 
my output, my output has to be Jeff. You can do it, buddy. Within epsilon of the limit. So if my inputs are within delta of this, then my outputs will be within epsilon of the limit. So if I get close enough to A, then my outputs get however close to L that somebody wants me to be. Does that make more sense? Let me say that one again. If I get close enough to A, and that delta kind of describes the closest, if I get close enough to A, I can make my outputs as close to L as anybody wants me to make it. That is what this means. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I did forget one thing. Given epsilon grade. So somebody comes along and lays down a challenge. I want you to be 0 0.00001 away from L. So I want you to be really freaking close. And I'm like, no problem. I can figure out a little range that that works, right? Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. So the whole point about 2.4 is actually doing this proof for specific functions. Okay. But officially, 2.4 is extra credit. Okay, okay. What does that mean real quick? That means if you don't do it, you're fine. That means if you do do it, I actually add that on top of the homework grade. So there's actually a way you can get above 100 homework grade. If you do all the homework, it's all great. Plus you do extra credit, you get a higher than 100 homework grade. Holy shit. Okay. All right, I'm going to erase all this. Here we go. Um, all right. This, I, I don't think I've said this word yet, which is new for me. I normally let this slip too early, but continuity. So this is section 2.5. Continuous. If I want a function is continuous. Holy shit. At a point, at an input. Uh, a. I don't know if you guys have ever heard if and only if. If and only if. Have, have you guys heard if and only if? If and only if means it works both ways. And normally I would write this as IFF, if and only if. So it's like if. Uh, okay. Um, so we're trying to define what continuous would mean. Uh, so this has got more to it, correct? This is going to have more to it. So you might want to leave some space on your notes. We're going to fill this in in a minute, but I want to investigate what this might mean. Um, what's your gut tell you about this function at A? Is it continuous at A? Is that function continuous at A? No. Nope. Okay. No, definitely not. Your gut should tell you there's a problem. It's not continuous. I can't drive on this road continuously through A, right? This road stops at a big ass hole and then another road starts up there. And I'm like, what do I have to do? Just freaking hike through something or, you know, anyway. maybe, maybe. So this is a type of discontinuity. All right. Is the function, is this function continuous at B? Yes. Yes, yes it is continuous at B. Yeah. That intuitively makes sense. All right, let me ask you this. Uh, is this function continuous at B? Say again, sorry. I said no. I would say no, but no. I don't know if it's like this is a circle. No. Let me ask you again. Can I drive in a car on this road continuously through B? What happens to me if I start No, with? because it's it's like the open no. circle notation. So yeah. there is no value at B for the output. There's no value there, which means it's not continuous through it. I can't 
take a car and go because there's a giant sinkhole, right? I used to live in Florida and Florida doesn't go up, it goes down. So there's no mountains, but the ground does sometimes just decide to go, ja, right? Okay. So I can't drive continuously on this road. Yes. So, so let me ask you this. So this is not continuous at B. Does it look like it's okay everywhere else? For one thing? Yes. It looks like it's okay everywhere else. It looks sort of like polynomial something everywhere else, right? Or maybe a trig function. Um, but at B, it has a problem. What's the limit? What's the limit as X approaches B of F of X? Does that exist? Oh, shit. You don't know. Does the limit exist? Let me just ask you that. Yes. What what is that limit now that I gave us something? It seems like maybe two, one and a half. That's it. Okay, my, my shitty scale here. Okay, I'm with you, but I'm trying to make it two. So the limit definitely exists. And in this case, I kind of made it two. I like it. I should have done this. Um all right, all right. Um no, I shouldn't have done it. Okay, this is fine. Everybody getting the idea here? It's not a it's not a horribly difficult idea visually but we have to finish this definition somehow. So we need to be specific. So does continuity, um, is the limit existing enough for something to be continuous at a point? Is the limit no. existing enough? No, but does the limit have to exist in order to maybe be continuous? Is it, is it possible for it to be continuous if the limit doesn't exist? No. No, good. So the limit does need to exist. It does, but that's not enough. Does everybody understand so far? The limit has to exist. Could I fix this road? Could I fix this road so people could actually drive on it and keep going? So think of this road as that's a giant pothole, basically, right? And it's just totally impassable. Could I fix the road? Yes. How? Build, build on top of it, build a bridge. Build a hole in, right? I could fill the hole in, right? Couldn't I just pour a lot of crap in there? And then, you know, everybody's like, let's hope this holds, you know? All right. Hey, you guys, so, so let me just make, a, before we finish this, you're going to love this. You ready? The name of this discontinuity is a jump discontinuity. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't the function jump? Okay, so that's a jump discontinuity. Can I fix this road in, in one step? Can I fix this road? No, I'd have to build a new road. I, I can't just, yeah, sure. We're just going to push on it until it moves over. No, it's not going to, no. Yes, no, that I can fix. This one is called, this is what I love about this. This is a jump discontinuity. I can't fix it. This problem is removable. I can remove the problem. This is called a removable discontinuity. Bah, bah. That is a removable discontinuity because if I filled that hole in, the discontinuity has been removed. The name makes so much freaking sense. And there's only one kind of discontinuity I don't have up here. Does anyone understand? Does anyone know? What other kind of discontinuity can happen? Discontinuity can happen on a on a graph, like a piecewise function. Well, that would be probably jump, right? Oh yeah. No, I love that though. That's the kind of function that could have this problem. That's probably a piecewise function right here, right? What about infinite discontinuity? So, for example. I mean, this is not something that we could actually build, but if I did somehow have a road that did this, am I ever going to get to here? <laughs> if I'm driving, we're driving and we want to get to Wally World and we have to follow this road, am I ever going to get to Wally World? No, the road doesn't match up, does it? Where does it actually connect? Where does this connect? Where do they actually meet? Where do these two things meet? Never. They do. They do. You ready? They meet at infinity, right? Ah, there we go. 
right? And, and that phrase, some, some teachers will hate that phrase. I'm okay with the phrase, as long as we understand that, that and the people that say they don't meet, you're right. The person who just said they do meet at infinity, you're correct. They do meet at infinity, you just can never get there, yes? All right, so there's a lot wrong with that phrase, but I, I think, I hopefully you kind of get what that means. Okay, okay. So I'm a little more relaxed with what I'll accept. Um, okay, so those are three kinds. Uh, removable, jump, infinite. Those are the three kinds of discontinuity. So, um, in this case, the limit does exist. So let, let's go back to the, I'm really sorry for your notes. Um, one, the limit as X goes to uh, A of F of X must exist. Okay, that's, that's number one. The limit has to exist. Um, what else, what must be true about, so how do I fix this? I fix this by filling this in, yes? So before I filled it in, what's f of b? What's f of b? At the moment, nothing. Good. I was hoping nobody would say 2 because it's undefined. So if the function's undefined there, it's like a hole there. It's not continuous there. So what's the second requirement? And now I'm sorry I'm changing my letters, but f of a must exist. Oh my gosh, those are vaguely English letters. Okay. All right, so first off, the limit has to exist. And obviously, inherent in this is from both directions, yes. The function has to have an output there. And then, of course, so watch this. What I've written so far. This seems like it would be good because the limit exists. Yes, the limit exists at A. Is F of A exist? Yes. But why is this discontinuous? There's one more thing I need, one more requirement that I need. Does the limit of F of X and F of A have to equal each other? Yes, the limit as X goes to A of F of X must equal F of A. So that's why this would not be good. So these three things together would mean that a function is continuous at A. It has to look like it's going somewhere and it has to actually get there. <laughs> That's basically how to sum this up. So the limit has to exist, F of A has to exist, and they must both equal each other. crazy shit, right? So it was a base, it was a pretty easy idea. You guys got it visually, but translating that into a list of requirements is a little weird. Okay. Um, let me think, I've lost my train of thought. What was I gonna do next? Oh, 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 this is huge. Has everybody got what they want from this? So again, this is section two, five. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a really cool, I, I forget what page it's on, um, but there's a really beautiful little theorem. Um, I should probably look it up, but uh, it talks about the functions that we know for sure are continuous. Functions that are continuous on their domain. Functions that are continuous on their domain. So what about, real quick, what about tangent? Is tangent continuous everywhere? Does anyone remember anything about tangent graphically? Doesn't it go asymptotic at pi halves? Yes, because tangent is sine over cosine, cosine of pi over two is zero. So tangent can't handle any kind of multiples, half multiples of pi, right? So at pi over two and negative pi over two, they're asymptotes. Now, and this is supposed to go through, it looks a little cubish, I love it. And then of course it just repeats forever, right? 
So on their domain. So if I ignore it, are, is Pyra 2 in tangents domain? Is Pyra 2 in tangents domain? Yeah. What is it? Go ahead, sorry. I say yes. What or, does it mean to be in somebody's domain? Like in their range, pretty much. So specifically, a, 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 a value for the input cannot be in the domain if it has no output. So with that idea, let me ask again. Are these asymptotes locations of things that are in the domain of tangent? No. No, because they don't have an output. So it, do you think that tangent is continuous according to this idea? Is it continuous everywhere except where it's not allowed to exist? Isn't this continuous? It's like a cubic function, right? It has an output for every input there. It's and it, and it go and it, the limits exist everywhere. Are you guys semi with me? If I just look between these walls, isn't this continuous? And then if I look between the next set of walls, isn't this continuous? It doesn't jump. There's no holes. There's no infinities in the middle of it. So that's what this is key on their domain. So trig functions are continuous on their domain. Uh, polynomials, obviously, because they're the nicest functions anywhere. Uh, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, rational functions. Uh, am I leaving anybody out? Uh, I think that's, I think that's everybody. Yeah, trig functions, polynomial functions, exponential functions, logarithmic functions, rational functions. Those are all continuous on their domain. So let me ask you, um, if I gave you this function and I said, where is this continuous? Uh, what do you got, Jeff? Uh, sure, I like it. Where is this continuous? All right, let me ask it like this. Where is it discontinuous? There you go. Where is this discontinuous? Uh, at positive eight and negative two. How'd you get that? What'd you do? I factored the bottom and then that's where it'd be undefined. X minus eight, X plus two. So X equals eight and negative two. So that's where it's discontinuous. So where is it continuous would be, oh boy, let me, let me change the question back to this. Where is it continuous would be Negative a, negative two, negative two to eight, eight to infinity. So I always like to think of this little piece as saying skip. Starting negative infinity, skip negative two, skip eight, go to infinity. So that's that's where it's continuous, right? So rational functions are continuous everywhere on their domain. So when they ask you where is this continuous, you can just focus on what's not in its domain. Okay, I like it. So let me do this. Let me, all right, instead of me drawing a horrific picture, let me see if I could steal one from the book. Let's see. run a master class on how to be not prepared for class. Let me see. So if the problem doesn't uh, specify on their domain, then we do say that it's discontinuous. No, no, no. So the whole idea of this is those functions I've listed, we know that they are continuous everywhere on their domain. So now, given that theorem, if they ask me where is this trig function continuous, I just have to think where what's not in its domain and I throw those out. Oh, okay. That I don't sense. have to do like the full theorem of limits and, and for the continuity. It's a nice shortcut with this with this theorem. Okay. Um hold on. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh let's see if I can find a picture real quick. Ba, ba, ba. Just oh here we go. Um 
I can just take one out. Of, oh, this is even better. Kick ass. What is it trying to do? Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, here we go. So you'll see a problem like this in the homework on my quiz next Monday. Next Monday? No, sorry. On the test or whatever. It won't be on the quiz next Monday. I'm sorry. It just goes up to two, three. Um, how many discontinuities does this have? Three. Good. Where are those discontinuities? At one, three, and five. Yeah, x equal one, x equal three, x equals five. Now, somebody else tell me uh, what kind of discontinuity do you see at one? Removable. Removable, kick ass. Uh, hold on, let me change colors here. Doobie doobie doo. Okay, so this is removable. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, what about at three? Jump. Jump. This could be a little tricky, but what about five? Shouldn't be tricky. Jump. No, I like it. It's actually removable, and, and that's why it's a little tricky. It, you can kind of look at it as a jump. You can kind of look at it as remove. It's removable, but the way I like to think of it is, did somebody come and try to correct the problem? Did they try to fill the pothole in? Yes. But what did they do? For some reason, they dumped it on the side of the road. They didn't fill the hole in. Yes. You're like, okay, you guys did bring this stuff out there. You did put it down, but you missed the hole. How the hell, right? It's like, what's happening? So officially this would be a, well, to be really honest, I would accept sort of either one, but officially the function doesn't jump because it keeps going, right? So this really is a removable. It just, they had a chance to remove it and they missed their chance. That's the way I kind of like to remember it. Okay, so can somebody else tell me then, um, well, I, let me ask, actually, let me ask a few questions uh, before I get to that. What's the limit as x goes to three from above or from the right? Sorry. Let me give it us looks like three. Yeah, let me give some scale for this poor little book. There we go. Yeah, so the limit looks to be because again, we're not caring about the fact that the function actually is defined here. All I care about is as I approach three, as the inputs come this direction, what are the outputs doing? The outputs are going towards three. Now, you know what the next question is, what's the limit as x goes to three from below, from the left? Negative two. Yeah, negative two. I like it. So if I ask you, using the definition of continuity, explain why this is discontinuous at three, which is a question I will ask you. Using the definition of continuity, which is the one, two, three thing we had up here, explain why it's discontinuous at three. What would you say? What's the limit as x goes to three? Does not exist. And isn't that, I think the way I wrote it, was that the first or second requirement? I can't remember. I think it was the first requirement, right? Yeah, the limit has to exist and this limit does not exist. Right? Now, if I ask you, why is it discontinuous at x equals five, can you say the same thing? What is the limit as x goes to five? Two. Yeah, the limit as x goes to five. Is everybody with me? Because limits can get a really freaky and people start to look at it backwards and your brain starts to hurt a little bit and you're like, oh no. But all the limit cares is, does it look like it's approaching? Not where does it get? Does it look like it's going somewhere and both sides agree? They both look like they're going to two, right? So the limit is two. And again, the limit doesn't care. Not only does it not care, it has no way to know what is happening at the value. It has no way to know what's happening at five. It just says it looks like it's going to two. Uh, and, and, but what is f of five? Four. Four. I love it. 
So therefore, can somebody point out to me why this is discontinuous? Because the length of f of x, oh, approaching a, is does not equal f of a. Beautiful. The limit exists, but it does not agree with f at that point, at that input. I love it. Are you guys okay out there? So it will get a little technical, and you got to be careful because if your explanation isn't quite referencing it enough, you might not get points, right? You, you have to be referencing the definition. If I say use the definition to explain this, you can't just say there's a hole there. Well, the definition says nothing about holes. So no, that doesn't, that's not good enough. I know what you mean, but it's not good enough. Okay. Um, ba ba ba. Let me clear all this away. What other, wait, I'm trying to remember. What other questions could I ask you here? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, I, I could ask you like, um, uh, explain why it's continuous at two, right? Using the definition of limit, why is it continuous at two? Well, does f of two exist? Yes. Yes. Does the limit as x goes to two exist? Yes. And do those agree with each other? Do those equal each other? Yes. yes. Right. So that's what you would say, right? So I'd like to give you an example of one that isn't a problem, but I need you to explain to me using the definition why it's not a problem, why it is continuous. So the idea of continuity is not difficult. It's just a little picky and you got to be careful about all the parts that have to go into it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Clear all that away. Whoops. All right, let me make sure there's something I am forgetting. Oh, here, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Okay. Oh, real quick, where's that theorem? Is it before here? No, probably is not. You're not going to find the theorem all of a sudden, are you, Jeff? Uh, poor little Jeff. This is a little bit evil of a question to ask before they even talk about the theorem, but look at part B. What kind of function is f of x in part b if x is not zero what kind of function is that oh shit sorry there it goes removal N not not what kind of discontinuity if x oh. is not zero what 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 is the function if x is not zero what is it what's the function for part b what, what's the if x is not zero what function am i using If x is zero, what's the function equal to? You guys know how to read a piecewise function? So if x is zero, isn't the function one? Yes, yes, yes. So if x is zero, the function is one. If x is not zero, what's the function? One over x to the power of two. One over x squared. What kind of function is one over x squared? It's not a trig function. It's not a natural log function. What kind of function is one over x squared? A rational function. Rational, kick ass, ratio, fractions, right? Ratio, rational function. And that's one of the ones. Isn't that in the theorem that it's continuous? It by itself is continuous everywhere on its domain. So, so this is continuous, yes? This is continuous. Uh, one is continuous, but it's just at one point. So where's the one place <clears throat> that this function, which is made up of both of these things, where's the only place it could be discontinuous? At zero. At zero. And of course, what's the limit as x goes to zero of f of x? Oh, shit. Let's see if you guys can get this. What's the limit as x goes to zero of the function? So let me ask you real quick, if the lim if I'm saying limit as x goes to zero, can x equal zero? If I say the limit as x goes to zero, can x equal zero in what I'm about to do? No. No, because what's the whole idea behind a limit? It never it touches the thing. Never equals this thing, right? Just gets closer and closer. So I'm looking at this thing here then, right? What's the limit of this function as x approaches zero well, x isn't zero. So what's the limit of this? What's the limit of one over x squared as x goes to zero? Zero? No. Is it infinity? Infinity. It's one divided by zero, which 
it's all fun and games until you divide by zero, right? So this will be, and it really is positive infinity, correct? Because it's squared, so it goes up in both directions. It's, is everybody with me? So what happens at zero using the definition of continuity that makes this discontinuous? Oh, shit. What is F of zero? One. One. What's the limit of F of X as X goes to zero? Positive infinity. Are these equal to each other? No. Thankfully not, because otherwise you'd become one years old and you would be infinitely old. I, mama, I am infinitely old. It's like, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so pretty, do you guys get this? So uh, it's got a level of pretty basic, you kind of get the idea, but then you got to be a little careful with the details, right? And especially because I think a lot of you are, uh, have issues with piecewise. Would anyone agree with me on that? You guys feel like you have some issues with piecewise functions. All right, a little bit, a little bit. It's just the truth. It's true because you just we don't you don't use them very much, do you? In fact, let, since I'm saying this, let me take a second because all right, let's just do this, Jeff. You know you need to. Um, let's just take a minute. Nobody asked me any questions about piecewise functions too much, but for example, how would you graph? Uh, Let's do one that's not too crazy. Um, I like it. And then what else you got there, buddy? You could do it, man. Write something. Oh, you wrote something. Good job. Okay. What does that mean? What does that even freaking mean? What is all that shit? Let's well, a function is x plus one. Uh, wow. X is greater than... Yeah. One. So if I'm inputting numbers that are bigger than negative one, I'm going to input them into X plus one. If I'm inputting numbers that are less than or equal to negative one, I'm inputting them into X squared. So here's what I do. Here's what I show my pre-calc students. I'm going to make a table of values. I'm going to make two table of values. Let me take this away because it looks a little bit weird okay there we go and this is if x is less than or equal to negative one right so if i do this one first so like negative one one negative two four negative three nine that's amazing <laughs> right um and then i do this one now watch this i'm going to do something really weird i'm going to put negative one in am i allowed to do that no right i'm, I'm not allowed to do that am i why do I still need to do that if I'm going to graph this? What's going to show up at negative one? If I'm an not allowed, hole. say again, sir. An open hole. Open circle. And where are you going to put the open circle? Don't you have to know where to put the open circle? So you right. have to plug in the bad point. But what I'm going to do for myself, what I've always done is this. I tell myself, I'm going to put negative one in, but I know I'm not really allowed to. So I put it in little parentheses just to remind me. I'm just doing this to see where the hole goes, right? So negative one, the output is zero, correct? So there's going to be a whole, an open circle at negative one comma zero. And then I can put in zero and I get one. I can put in one and I get two and blah, 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 right? The biggest mistake people make when they graph these things, where am I going to put the graph? I don't know, up here is I'll get somebody to, and I'm not saying this is the answer to this, right? But can somebody tell me what's wrong with, 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 um, with, with this? Is anything wrong with this? Um, is anything wrong with this as an answer to graphing a piecewise function? If you wanted to graph a piecewise function and you give me this answer, what's wrong with it? It doesn't represent the limits of x be less technical <laughs> what what what's the how do you check to see if something's a function vertical points. line test oh. vertical line test this is past the vertical line test hell no right so the mistake somebody made is they weren't they were only supposed to maybe do uh they weren't supposed to do that they're supposed to do this and they weren't supposed to do this 
So if I do that now, now it's only here and then it jumps and then it's up here. So the whole idea is I am not going to draw this line anywhere past negative one. Yes. I mean, uh, anywhere like going back anywhere further below negative one. Do you guys understand the line's going to stop there, right? That's the big mistake I see. So let me, let me, um, don't clear everything, Jeff. Stop it. All right, real quick, real quick. Nothing's real quick, I know. Um, so here's negative one, negative two. Good job, buddy. One, two, great, fantastic. So let me graph this. So I know at negative one, zero, there's going to be an open circle. And then at zero, it's one. And then at one, it's two. Okay, that's fascinating. All right, so there's my line. Jihad. And then for less than or equal to negative one, it has negative one, one, negative two. Well, shit, Jeff, that's too bad. Negative two, four, and then it goes like that. And I know what a parabola looks like, so I can draw the curve. Are you guys, do you, and then you can see it passes the vertical line test, correct? What is the domain of that function I just drew? You overthink it every time. Negative infinity to negative one. And nope. Then... Nope. Nope. Here's... Oh, it's so hopeful. Does negative one not go somewhere? Does negative one go somewhere? Does negative one have an output? Yes. And, and, and does every other x value have an output? Yes. So the domain is all real numbers, period. Done. Okay. You don't have to stop anywhere. And, and, and Angel, I'm not coming down. You, I understand because it looks like you have to be careful. But the domain just cares. It, domain just says what X's have outputs. All of them. Okay. That's all we care about, right? If this would have been an open circle, then I would have had to throw negative one out. But okay, okay. Enough of that. Is that, is that all right, guys? I mean, I was hoping I'd get some more questions about piecewise. There are a few piecewise functions in chapter one, and they always trip people up. Um, and they really shouldn't, especially if you just more, if you just show yourself more work, give yourself a couple tables, right? Nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. Um, okay, let me clear all this. All right, let me do this. Hold on. What time we got? Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? I want to I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. There's removable, infinite jump. Look at that. The book agrees with me. Isn't that nice? Uh, we already talked about this kind of thing. Oh, we, we haven't talked about this. This is to be fair. Can somebody tell me what does the, can anyone describe to me somehow very quickly what a square root function looks like graphically? What does a square root function look like? Or where does it start? Let me ask that. Zero. 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 But does it exist below zero? No. No. And then of course it, it's, uh, I'm not gonna be that all that specific. Right there. We, uh, looks like a parabola that fell over, correct? And lost its bottom half right? A parabola fell over and lost its bottom half, right? Um, sounds like, you know, some celebrity on TMZ get, get a picture. Okay. So to be fair, let me ask you this. Is it continuous at zero? Is the square root of x continuous at zero? What seems to be a little evil about that is does it look like there's a limit at zero? Well, no, because can it even come from the other side? So what we do is, to be fair, if it doesn't even have a domain on the other side of the point, that's not fair. So it's continue, it, it could be continuous from the right, or in this case, continuous, no, I'm sorry, this is the one, continuous from the right, because as we approach zero from above, the function does go to zero and the function is zero at zero. Is everybody with me? So that it takes away the extra requirement that it's gotta be from both sides because it's impossible for it to agree from both sides. That doesn't seem fair then, does that make sense? So the square root function is continuous everywhere on its domain, even zero. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's just not fair if there's a whole region that's not even in the domain of the function that shouldn't count against the poor little point <clears throat> trying to be continuous, right? Okay, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. All right. And then let's see. 
Oh, I don't care about that too much. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, who cares? Who cares? Okay. Is this anything good? No, it's all bad stuff. Oh, here's the theorem. Almost any polynomial, any rational, and then they expand on it later. Uh, where's your expansion there, people? Is this neat? Mm, sort of. Uh, there's a squeeze theorem again. Come on now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see what I left out. I did leave out root functions. Oh, shoot. I didn't want to do that. Go away. Um, I did leave out root functions, but I think, and of course the inverse trig is in there. I kind of lumped that in with trig, but that's the complete list. Those are all what we consider nice functions, <clears throat> even though they have some domain issues, they're nice everywhere else. Nice in this case is continuous. A function is really not nice if it's discontinuous somewhere. And there are functions that are discontinuous at infinite places, right? Blah, 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 blah. Any, uh, any combination of things, then look what they do here. Where is this? All right, let's look at this real quick and I think we'll call it a day after this. Um, where could this function be discontinuous? What's the what's kind of like the first thing you see in that function? Uh, X equals one. Or negative one, right? Because the bottom can't be zero. So this is kind of like the rational piece to this. So X can't be one or negative one. What does natural log of X say? Where's natural log of X going to be continuous? Where, what's its domain? Open circle zero to positive infinity. Yeah, so X greater than zero. I like it. What about inverse tangent? Does anyone remember what inverse tangent looks like? Oh, shit. Here's tangent. Here's like one complete cycle of tangent, correct? And then, of course, it continues infinitely in both directions. If I just restrict it to be this and I invert it, the inverse tangent looks really nicer than you might think. It looks like, oh, my God, that's like the smoothest curve I've ever drawn. Sorry, I have to celebrate when I can. In between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Does that have any domain issues? Does inverse tangent have any domain issues? Uh, no. Nope, it has range issues, but no domain issues. So this doesn't do anything to me. So X has got to be greater than zero, but also X can't be one. Negative one sort of already were thrown out because X has to be greater than zero. And that's how you end up with this. It has to be greater than zero, but you also cannot include one because that would make the bottom go crazy. Does that make sense? So when you have a function with multiple parts to it, the domain is affected by all of them. They kind of compound the problems, right? Does that make sense, everybody? A little bit. Let me see if I'm going to lie right now. I said this would be the last thing we do, but hold on. I want to make sure I really just knock this whole section out. Hold on. I feel like there's one thing I'm missing. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. Oh, is this, don't even tell me, is this where we finally do this? Wait a minute. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's a lot of blah, blah. Oh, this is big. Okay, I'm not going to try to do this right now. That's right. This is where this is. Uh, that's a bit much to try to squeeze in at the end of class. Um, just... A little, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna finish up two five on Monday, but I wanna don't go anywhere yet. Um, just a little looking ahead. Two six is limits at infinity, which we sort of already talked about when we did horizontal asymptotes, right? Does that make sense? So like letting x get really big, positive uh, infinity or negative infinity. Uh, so two six should be something we can get through relatively quickly. And then 2.7 is where some of you guys know this word. Some of you guys know how to do derivatives. 
And have we learned them officially yet? Have we learned derivatives yet in this class right now? No, so don't do them. So some of you guys are doing the derivatives. Uh, we don't know that yet. Too bad. You can be like, I learned it. I don't care. You can only do what you've learned in this class. So don't bring in stuff that we don't know yet officially. Um, okay, so that's, that's going to be where we finally get into real calculus stuff. Okay. All right, I think that's enough for today. So um, if you need to hang out, ask me anything, feel free. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you later. Don't forget the quiz will be active Wednesday morning. You're going to do the quiz instead of lecture. And then Friday's lecture, you can there'll be a YouTube video I'm going to put up on Canvas. And you can watch it whenever you want to to get ready for Monday's class. And Monday we have a quiz. Oh, shit, because I'm so evil on two, one, two, 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 three. Professor, yes. Uh, for homework corrections, did we just submit them where we submitted the homework? Yeah, submit them right on top. Okay. Makes it easy for me to see what you did first and what you changed. Thank you. Sure. Are you else all right? Okay. I'm gonna head out. See you guys. Oh, is iPhone out there? Who's iPhone? Are you there? Oh, well. Nope, iPhone. iPhone. Okay. Uh, I don't know who you are, so you won't get credit for being here today. Ruh-roh.